So just recently, OpenAI announced that ChatGPT was going to start supporting images. But did you know that GPT-4 has actually been able to support images in some form uh, from right when it was released? You just need to know how to ask it. So let's jump in here and say, hey, draw me a stick figure in SVG. And, and we're going to send it through. And sure, here is a simple stick figure in SVG. And it's coming out with this XML format called SVG, where you describe shapes, lines, and colors, and things like that. And it assembles them into uh, an image. And great. There is how you make GPT-4 draw a stick figure. So I'm Kai Gogol. I'm the chief architect at Ironclad uh, and a contributor to Rivet, which is uh, on the screen right now. It's a visual programming environment for AI, and it's open source. So let's talk a little bit about drawing wizards and not just stick figures with GPT-4 and Rivet. Uh, first, I'm going to touch on why I'm so excited about stick figures, then why GPT-4 is more than just a large language model, uh, and then we're going to actually draw some wizards with not only GPT-4, but also Claude 2 and GPT-3.5. And we're going to end by talking about why multimodal models are really exciting and what they mean for the future. So let's dive in. So first, why am I so excited about this stick figure? Well, if you think about it, large language models are all about predicting the next word in a natural language sentence. Uh, and so the idea that you can take something like GPT-4 and have it understand this weird SVG format for describing shapes and geometries and actually get anything sane is pretty cool. But there's even more going on here, because while we traditionally think of GPT-4 as a large language model, as opposed to, say, the text-to-image models of Midjourney uh, or Dolly, actually GPT-4 was trained not only on text data, but also on image data, making it a multimodal model. And the hope I think there was to make sure that GPT-4 could maybe have some intelligence about spatial reasoning, geometry, symbolic representation, things like that. And from this, it seems like there was some success there. So GPT-4, more than just a large language model, but how do we know that it's, this is not just GPT-4 regurgitating some SVG that it found on the internet one time for a stick figure. Well, we don't. But what we can do is we can actually give it a task that will require it to understand something about the stick figure. So uh, let's ask it to turn this man into a wizard. And we're actually going to give it the SVG that it generated. And we're going to feed that SVG and the command into GPT-4. So as we're doing this, let's think about, as humans, what would we do in order to turn this man into an SVG? Well, uh, I would think about actually adding a little hat to the top of the head, um, maybe a wand or a staff or something. And uh, yeah, that that's probably what I would do. <laughs> so SVG to PNG. Let's see what GPT-4 decides to do. Okay, so to turn this man into a wizard, we can add a hat and a wand to the SVG. All right, pretty cool. So there's our stick figure turned into a wizard by adding that triangular hat and a little wand. Um, so yeah, this is pretty cool because, you know, as humans, we look at these representations and clearly they're not photographically accurate. Uh, but we think there's the head, there's the arm, and where does a hat go? Where does a wand go? Uh, and arguably, it looks like GPT-4 has the same level of understanding. Uh, and not only that, it's doing it in this like weird format called SVG. And so so cool to see that 
So it's super cool that a large language model for predicting the next word in a sentence is actually able to also apply that same kind of reasoning uh, to visual representations. But is that kind of like image data that GPT-4 was trained on? Is the multimodality of GPT-4 actually that special? Well, let's look at how other models perform with this task. Uh, so we're going to downgrade to 3.5 Turbo, give it some more tokens. And let's actually see how GPT-3.5 handles this. All right, to turn the man into a wizard, add some wizard accessories with a hat and a wand. Okay, so it knew kind of the language part of how to, how to do things, but when it came to actually the spatial reasoning, I don't think that we can say that GPT 3.5 successfully turned the stick figure into a wizard. Uh, well, what about Claude? All right, so Claude is able to take the SVG and say that it's gonna transform it into a wizard. Uh, but once again, a little bit like 3.5, I don't think we would say that it successfully turned the stick figure into a wizard. Uh, but again, this is a very unfair task uh, because Claude and GPT 3.5 were not trained on image data. So there's no apparent way that they should have an understanding of kind of spatial and geometric reason, reasoning. But it's also why I think that this multimodality of GPT 4 is actually so darn cool uh, because it was able to do that and we were able to actually get a result that feels very, very human. So I'm going to switch back to GPT-4 right now. So that's how you draw a wizard with GPT-4. And a little bit about uh, GPT-4's multimodality. And I hope you are now a little bit more or almost as excited as I am about what multimodal models are going to bring uh, to AI. Uh, because as these models are able to reason about geometries, about images, but also understand uh, text and reasoning and language, uh, suddenly the world of possibilities for what they can approach and help with uh, is just wide open. I also hope that maybe you're excited to jump in and play around a little bit more with this example. Uh, again, we built this in Rivet, uh, which is an open source visual AI programming environment. What I really love about it is that some of these research papers uh, and things that you read about can actually come alive on screen in front of you uh, and just the way that this did. And to give credit where credit's due, uh, I didn't come up with the idea of drawing wizards in SVG format. Uh, I first heard about this idea from a Microsoft research paper called Sparks of AGI uh, that was released in March. And uh, there's an excellent lecture that goes into not only how to draw unicorns, actually, uh, with GPT-4, but also a number of other really cool properties uh, of the model that many of which haven't actually been fully realized or explored yet. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something uh, and stay tuned for more content in Rivet.